Welcome to the class on basic electronics. The topic for today is basics of bipolar junction transistor. To the construction of BJT. As you can see, there are three blocks made up of different sizes. They indicate the sizes of three different elements or three different blocks in BJT, which are collector, base, and emitter. So in a BJT, the collector is the largest one, followed by emitter and then base. Also, you can see there are various color gradients used to depict emitter, base and collector. They, they talk about the amount of charge carriers in each of them. So, it's, as you can see, emitter is the darkest one having the highest amount of charge carriers followed by collector and then base. Also, you can note that emitter and collector are depicted using the same kind of color range whereas B is depicted by a contrast color. This indicates that emitter and collector have same type of charge carriers whereas B or base has a different type of charge carriers. Depending upon this charge carrier distribution, you have two types of BJTs. One which is going to be called as NPN and the other which is going to be called as PNP. Before we start off with the working analysis of bipolar junction transistor, let's look into the different modes of operation that the device op offers. The operation of the bipolar junction transistor depends upon the type of biasing connected at the input and output junction. If both input and output junction are reverse bias, it will operate in cutoff. If both input and output junctions are forward bias, they will operate in saturation region. If input is forward bias and output is reverse bias, it will operate in forward active region. And if input is reverse bias and output is forward bias, it will operate in a region called as reverse active. of an NPN transistor in forward active mode. So as you can see, the input junction is forward bias and the output junction is reverse bias. Now as you increase the forward bias, there will be more number of charge carriers or free charge carriers created in the emitter junction. As you go on increasing this forward bias, number of free charge carriers, which are electrons in the case of NPN, will gain enough of energy to move from emitter base junction to base collector junction and then from the base collector junction to collector and then to the positive plate of the battery. Thus, it will constitute two currents, emitter current and collector current. At the same time, the majority charge carriers in the base will also get enough of energy to move from the base emitter junction to the negative plate of the battery. Note that the charge carriers in the base are holes and they will constitute a current IB. The direction of emitter current, collector current and base current are as shown below. Also note that the current directions for emitter and collector current are exactly opposite to the current to the moment of charge carriers whereas the current direction to the base is equal to the moment of charge carriers in the base. The direction of emitter current is also depicted in the symbol for an NPN BJT as shown. Now also let's look into the forward active mode for a PNP bipolar junction transistor. The working is going to be very similar except that the charge carriers in this case are going to be exactly opposite. So when you forward bias the emitter base junction, you will have the charge carriers which are holes now moving from the emitter base junction to the collector and the negative plate of the battery. Thus it will constitute two currents IE and IC. In base there are going to be majority charge carriers which are going to be electrons. They will be moving uh, from base emitter junction to the positive plate of the battery thus constituting a current IB. The directions of current IE, IB and IC are as shown. Note that the current in emitter and collector are going to follow the direction of movement of charge carriers which are holes whereas the current direction of IB will be reversed to the charge carriers and base which are electrons. The direction of current IE that is emitter current is also depicted in the symbol for PNP bipolar junction transistor. Once you have studied the working of both NPN and PNP transistors in forward active mode, we can say the emitter current IE is going to be equal to the collector current plus the base current. Also note the base current is going to be very small as compared to IE and IC and hence for most of the analysis we can say IE would be approximately equal to IC. Thank you.